Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This week is going to be all about the Gen Con US Nationals Tournament and the best four days in gaming. This is episode 477. Hattie Hattie, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100? You stick deadpan and humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume, you absolute fool. They're gonna be able to edit that out, for sure. That's cool, because it's expensive. I'm gonna make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Shiro Clicks order. A little different episode this week. Simeon is off working, and we got back home late from Gen Con uh, pretty late last night. So instead of Simeon, we are joined by, that's right, Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Uh, it's going. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit brutal coming back and being Simeon right now. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. to just have to hop right back on the road i don't know that's uh that's tough <laughs> to go to go back the way he came but not as far is wild and we wish him the best so listeners make sure you think of simian in these, yeah, these trying in times <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah exactly <laughs> so usually we get into what made us happy this week i think it's pretty obvious so instead we're just going to jump into gen con the first day was a big drive waking up 6 a.m Getting on the road, Simeon being a trooper, driving us there and back. Of Most course. importantly, though, we got Ooh. our uh, our signature Dial H Taco John's breakfast. Oh, that is Whenever true. we're hitting the work, oh, you know we got to get uh, some breakfast burritos in us, sausage. That's right. Obviously. That's right. <sighs> so, As yeah. if you would go with bacon. You know, <laughs> exactly. Like, come on. So right away in the morning, you know, we're practically dancing around the living room. <laughs> Waiting for the Taco John's. <laughs> Ooh, I can't yeah. wait. But yeah, no, exactly. So uh, it was great. A little TJ's in us. We hit the road and we got to Gen Con around six, five o'clock or so. They got their badges and their tickets. We'll get into me getting my badges and tickets later. It's not a fun story. But uh, we got to hang out with some HeroClix players. We chatted up a lot with uh, HeroClix USA. It was great hanging out yeah. with him, catching some dinner and just, you know, shooting the wind the by and by and we get rested up went to the hotel did a little live stream and then uh got ready for our day one thursday was like the real day one for everybody else but we got there thursday so really quick i want to shout out the theme tournament winner for day one we had i really hope i think it's amato romero he won the very first theme event of the weekend so shout out there little phoenix sentinel little karima uh, time gem magneto exospecs little mr sinister action he used a lot of silver elements i was actually pretty yeah, pretty the, impressed uh, here the, the karima uh, team up is really cool too to give everyone sentinel so that's not helping you complete the theme because in theme you have to have the keyword printed on the card but it does help enable your master mold who gets uh bonuses on his factory dial when a sentinel ooh. hits so everybody on your team including your danger rooms you know everybody yeah. We'll start stacking tokens for him. So I really like that build. I thought it was cool. So no, I was like super cool, super gnarly. Even Thursday though, man, <sighs> like uh, it was like shoulder to shoulder in Gen Con. Oh my gosh, it was packed. so packed this year, guys. And even showing up like 6 p.m. on you know kind of the primer day, uh, we missed the exhibit hall that day. We were a bit too late for that. But even then, um, it wasn't horrible to get the badges, but. Uh, there were people everywhere. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Gen Con is packed. If you plan to go in the future, just be ready for it to be very tight quarters a lot of the time. Trying to get through the crowd, walking to events you need to get to. If you think, oh, it'll only take me you know, five minutes to get there, maybe give yourself like 10 minutes to walk yeah, through the convention. There's a ton of people. It's, it is wild. And if you plan on uh, picking up a certain Disney card game, Jeez. maybe consider bringing some Riot gear. Yeah, oh my gosh. The uh, the 5,000 people riot that was the Lorcana line and everything. Goodness gracious. They had to segment it through the entire con every day. Like you'd go through the front door, you'd see them lined up outside. Outside, yeah. Like very far outside of it. 
you'd walk in and there would be these segmented pieces, kind of like the movie theater ropes, right? Um, across quite literally the entire first hallway. And then that would wrap into the exhibit hall and take it to the booth. So I don't know. It, it, it was nuts. But the first day, apparently 5,000 people just mobbed them. And uh, Gen Con didn't like that particularly. So <laughs> they switched it up a bit. They got a little better at it. Uh, thank goodness. But still, man, those lines were absolutely insane going into like Lorcana. So if you're a listener who's interested in Lorcana, I'm sure there's a podcast out there for you because we don't know yeah. much <laughs> besides, of course, we do know that Cusco slash the Kronk. Kronk is Kronk. in it. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> we love Kronk. Oh, gosh. But hopefully you got your cards if you were in that line because that looked, um, quite frankly, miserable. It looked, Yeah. No, it did not look fun. So Friday was our first day, real day of playing and everything. So we jumped into a X of Swords big summer OP event that they had there where you play through each month. Uh, it was pretty fun. The first round, it was like me, Simi, and Ian, and we had uh, Ed Arnold Berkovitz there, so that was a lot of fun. We had interesting polls first round. Overall, it was a great event. That first round was tough, though. Ed cooked us, man. He was just killing things left and right. None of us could really, really put down uh, his furies either. He kind of tutored us, honestly, in like, this is how you should play the format. None of us really had experience in the X of Swords event. But he's like, everyone, you know, like, take quick turns, kill. Yeah, And he exactly. was uh, yeah, very precise in doing that. He also had the Uncommon Havoc, who was just blasting us for like <sighs> five, six damage at a time. And that was just like... What do I do? <laughs> it's downright dirty. It's like, yeah, I can't move good. within six of this guy or I'm going to get lit up. No. So I stayed away from him for the most part. I kept going for Simeon's Empath because that guy dies so easily. Man, <laughs> I wish going into it we would have known. I think everybody probably at Worlds experienced this, that Empath is just like a free point generator. Yeah. Like you just oh, farm yeah. an Empath, dude. It's it's bad. Uh, and he's just like, hey, little finger gun pointing his little dumb haircut. <laughs> all pink, just all ready pink, to be blasted. Just, oh, dude, he's ready to die. He knows what he's about. <laughs> and the next round I had was pretty fun. I had to play against Alex Mater, and he got super lucky and pulled the super rare apocalypse. And yep. instantly, so one guy next to me was like, hey, you know, truce, let's, you know, try to do boss battle against APOC. And I was like, oh, sure, I genuinely believe this. I, I totally believe this Heracles player that he'll call a truce. So I move up my pieces. I'm like, yeah, they're within charge range of his. But, you know, he's a gentleman. He has honor. He follows his word. No, he, he offered. He, uh, he offered the truce. <laughs> uh, and then he instantly charged and attacked one of my guys. And I was like, oh, so that's how it's going to be. That's okay. I see how it is. And he was like, you know, man, I, I had to go for it. What I'm like, no, no, no. It's cool. It's cool. So my next turn, I like crit hit with object attack into a wall. One shot his empath, like <laughs> did like six, seven damage or whatever. And he was like, what? What have you no honor? What happened to our truce? And I was like, honor? Truce? I must have missed the part when you attacked me first, man. It was pretty funny. Uh, it was a great time. I got like second in that game, which was tough against APOC. And then, I don't know, how'd your second game go? Anything fun? Uh, the second game, gosh, I'm trying to remember the second game of the first day. Um, I know I took first in it, but I can't That's remember good. I can't remember what I pulled in that second one. Because, um, oh, uh, shoot. I think I might have had the uh, Rare Wolverine that game. It might have been that. Ooh. I think I had the rare Wolverine good. in game two because, yeah, game three, I didn't have him. Game three was a lot more tough. Oh, wait, no, no. I totally had Wolverine in game three. I don't remember what I played in game two. Oh, wait, yes, I do. I had Havoc. That's what it was. Oh. It was the one time I had Havoc. Okay. And this, yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was amazing, but I just, yeah, whatever. So I had Dazzler and Havoc, and, uh, yeah, it just we got to a point where basically everyone was kind of in front of my starting area, and I really didn't have to move. And I had so many rally dice on Havoc because it's opposing five, so you know, three turns of attacks, you're bound to get a couple. But when you pull his off, you get to increase his range by two, increase his damage by two. He's a four damage already, and I had enhancement. I have Psychic Blast as well. So typically in Exoswords, you know, a lot of dials are like seven, eight clicks. Um, and what ended up happening, Grey Crow moves up, he passes to me, I blast him for seven, he dies, turn goes around the table, Grey Crow moves back up, blast him for seven, crit him this time, 
just dies from top click. Oh, oh. And uh, I was like, okay, so that's what Havoc does. So that game, I just uh, everything just kind of fell in my favor. Just racked up a lot of points. Like was one shotting rogues, gray crows, dazzlers, you name it. Havoc just put in work. I think I hit willpower like half the time too. So. Oof. Yeah, it was a it was a brutal second game for the opponents, but I, I had a lot not, of fun. I would not have loved playing that. Not gonna lie, uh, <laughs> my third game I was at the second table. Ooh ah, and I was able to. It was tough. In each booster someone handed me, there was both Rachel Summers and a Rogue. That's and, a tough pick, man. and it's it was really hard. And I was like, you know what, Rachel's got penetrating damage, and I already had chose. Uh, Dazzler, and I was like, I already have an enhancement on my yeah. team. I think Rachel's good, so I had double Rachel, Dazzler, and Cuckoo were my team. Dude, I got Cuckoo the last two times, and it was just like, I guess all right, we have Prob, awesome. Uh, but Cuckoo actually put in a lot of work. This game was a bit more of a slog than I wanted it to be. I missed a lot of dice rolls. I always had ESD every turn, and that actually never mattered with Rachel, believe it or not, <laughs> in this uh, in this format. But it was still a ton of fun. I was able to win that BR by quite a lot of points. Probably my favorite thing I did was let somebody kill my double token cuckoo, like prod them to hit me so she could be fresh the next turn. I used, like, she's still a six range, two damage, ten attack. So I was able to kill someone with that next turn. When the justice card came up, I would always choose her because then that would give her a three damage oh, yeah, instead of yeah. a two. So, like, that was a ton of fun. But yeah, that game was great, but that just meant like somebody else, like literally my opponent to the left, had two rogues that were just bashing, and I was like, ugh, oh, it's yeah. hard. It's really tough, but we were able to pull through the win, grab ourselves a pogger pog, and I think technically I ended up like sixth that day, sixth or seventh, somewhere like right outside top four-ish out of the people, but it was how'd, really your, close. Uh, how'd your third game go? You're at top table. You're fighting. Yeah, the, the third game. Big leagues. Yeah, it was... Uh, Let's see, Jay Major, Ed Arnold Berkovitz, and Alex Mater. So I think they've all been national champions or very close, if not like yeah. national champions. So yeah, it was a little intimidating. This is the game that I pulled the Rare Wolverine, and uh, that certainly helped out a lot. Um, for the most of the game, it was pretty close. I was usually up by like 60 to 100 points at any given time. And then the last few rounds hit. What really screwed me, I don't know the name of this tarot, but when it gets flipped, um, you t you pick a character, everybody does, and they put it in their starting area. Mm. And so Ed has been in Alex's starting area just like farming points over there. I don't want to approach over there because I'm going to get clapped if I do. So it's like I just I can't do that. And so I'm over here fighting Jay who's got the Mr. Sinister who's replacing my dice rolls, making me miss, making me crit miss. Mm. There was one round where we literally all went around the table and crit miss because of Mr. Sinister. It was brutal. Um, but anyway, uh, that tarot card flips. The Gorgon that I was trying to kill, I needed a 7 or an 8, so it wasn't a guarantee to kill the guy. But it was big. To miss out on that really, really sucked. <laughs> so he got placed in his starting area. Ed's, Ed ends up scoring him. Um, yeah, and it came down to the last few turns. There was just really nothing to score. You know, you're playing with people who... If there is anything injured, it's going to die that turn, right? Like, people know how to exactly, capitalize. Yeah. And so, it came down to it. I ended up getting fifth in the first Exoswords event by 10 points. Oh. And, oh. Uh, yeah, like, literally, a difference of uh, 10 points would have gotten me uh, third in the BR, or second in the BR, and then I would have placed high enough with event points to take fourth. So... It is what it is, but uh, it definitely stung a bit. But, you know, I had another event on Saturday, which we'll get into later. Right that on. That went really well. <laughs> the end of Friday after – well, actually, before we get into that, we got to play Onslaught. I got to play d, &D yeah, Onslaught yes, with Mitch did. from WizKids. And that was a ton of fun. I think, you know, like looking at Onslaught, and we've all been kind of like talking about it like a little bit kind of in the back of our minds here – but actually playing it and seeing kind of how similar it is to just a game of hero clicks was a ton of fun. There was even charge, combat reflexes. I want to say Battle Fury was in there somewhere too. Kind so, of, yeah. Kind like, of, like in a way. Everything was broken up by action types too, which yeah. I really liked. That helped me a lot with like, okay, you can do this, this, and this. Here's what they're defined as. And then the symbol is right there. Like looking at everything going into it, it definitely seemed like it was more 
then uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I felt like it was going to be really complicated, but if you're a Hero Clicks player, I think you can pick it up pretty I, quickly. I definitely think so because it's just like you make a Hero Clicks team, you make a three person Hero Clicks team, basically. And when you're looking at all these like characters and you're just learning how to play the game, and somebody hands you, I'm not going to say Unimine, but someone like handed you like uh, Prime Spider Man, basically, and that was what one character did. So really, you were just like, man, uh, what all I can do with this one character? Uh, like that's how it felt. <laughs> Basically being like that level of not totally that complicated, but a pretty complicated piece right away. And so normally in Hero Clicks, you're juggling around like 10 figures on your team. But with this, it's like, okay, I'm pretty happy. I'm only focusing on like my one or two guys playing like on a team yeah, with it. It the, was pretty fun. The team element definitely helped. I think it made it more fun. And uh, yeah, it was just nicer. It was less to think about. And then, you know, you could kind of go and go back and forth. Like it was Simeon and I versus Calder and Mitch. And, yeah, just overall, like, really, really cool. I also liked the rules that they had on Elevated where you get uh, you, you keep your advantage for rolling when you're shooting down. But if you're shooting up, you only get to roll 1d20 instead of 2. I right. thought that was really smart. Also, the rules around cover. So if you're, like, around blocking but it's not completely blocking it, you get the cover roll. So That's interesting, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of d and I mean, obviously, it's a d and <laughs> game. Yeah. But uh, if you play D&D and you play Hero Clicks, it's literally going to be like the two combined, more so the D&D part. But it'll be really easy to pick up, I think, for, for players of both or even players of just D&D or players of just Hero Clicks. Plus, again, the miniatures are pre-painted. And if you're a big miniatures guy for D&D, the whole point of the cards is that they're generic enough that you can use your own D&D miniatures. So if you're like, okay, the Paladin guy that they have in the game he looks pretty cool, but I want to use my miniature for him. You totally can. Like, the car doesn't look one-to-one -one like the mini that you have in the game. So it's really nice that you can just use your own miniature if you want to. So uh, after playing D&D &D Onslaught, we went over to the... We went over to the Hero Clicks Fan Appreciation Event, which was a lot of fun. So just going into it, I got a couple of... Took a few pictures. We didn't post any of these. We were pretty far back. They weren't going to be good looking pictures if we posted them. But no. <laughs> uh, we see the. It starts off with the welcome to my TED Talk. Who's ready for Hero Hook spoilers? And we see the Disney Plus wave two Obama stay abomination in his guru outfit, but as full on abomination. For Notorious, we see. We already saw Frank the Plant in Mere, Frank the Plant in Mere Master, but we see the. Dark Knights, not Dark Knights, excuse me. This is just Undead Joker, right? This isn't Deceased Black Lantern. Deceased, Joker. there we go. Yeah, yeah. Deceased. Covered he looks pretty blood. cool, yeah. He's got his hand out, you know. We Maybe see. some Joy Buzzer action, who knows? <sighs> I hope joy, so. The That'd Undead cool. Zombie Joker, but just a, a Joy Buzzer. Yeah. <laughs> Still just like, yeah, I pranked you, Batman brains. Uh, we see a Ghost Surfer, and he was passed around, and holy smokes, are these sculpts big. So... I guess to get to dial it back a little bit, the case uh, that day, we saw some boosters of Notorious, sorry, not Notorious, but of Wheels of Vengeance. And we were like, wow, that booster is really big. You know, we thought the reason you're making, uh, getting rid of a fourth or fifth figure was to make room for a two by one. And that way it would just still fit in a normal booster. But the boosters were just way bigger. And we're like, oh, does that just mean like, what, the sculpts are huge? Some people are like, does that mean two by twos could be in the set? Nah, the sculpts are just massive on these two by one figures and even the single base figures obviously we're keeping up with that new scale but man these two by two the two by one figures with the new base type and the glow in the dark and how big we are i mean ghost surfer was like two inches tall he was massive that big flame effect he was heavy it was a thick like, wave that he was on yeah he was and heavy yeah, yeah. very heavy so I'm excited. If you saw some pictures on our Facebook, you see that the bases no longer are like peanuts. They have that little like crink in the middle or whatever. They now are just like a full tube. So I would like to dub them Twinkie bases. I don't know if it'll catch on, but the Twinkie base I think looks cool. We got to see some sculpts of the like Ghost Rider cowboy guy. He looked really cool. Yeah, we, the Spirit? Spirit Rider. Is that spirit what he's called? Rider. Spirit I think Rider? So. It's like the first Ghost Rider, isn't it? Uh, well, I mean, the first one's like Mammoth, dude, right? Oh, sure. But like, the, well, yeah, retroactively, yeah, guess, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I think it's, I think that's Spirit Rider. Okay. I think that's his name. And he looks dope. I mean, his horse yeah, is completely totally on fire. He's totally translucent. Super yeah. cool. 
We get to see Zrathos standing there looking like a silly little comic book demon. We get to see a Danny Ketch Ghost Rider. And we get to see this Wolverine from X-Men Origins Wolverine where he's, like, using his claws to turn his bike around and go forward. So I love, love that. So we also got to see a lot of those in person in hand, and I was super impressed by that. Uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited for the Ghost Rider Reels of Vengeance set. I know Notorious is next up, and we got to be like, oh, I'm pumped for that. But, man, seeing all of this and how big the sculpts are for, are for wheels, I'm pumped. I don't know, Ian. Anything you want else to say about that before we move uh, on? I think – I really do think wheels is one of the coolest, like, stylized sets Heroclix has done in – I don't know. It feels like over a decade. I really love the yeah. directions they're going with this. I like the glow in the dark stuff. You know, feel free to feel how you'd like about it. I think it's really cool. I think the base colors are going to be really cool for the glow mm. in the dark stuff. That's a big thing we didn't mention. And yeah, the entire base is yeah. glow in the dark, and it's that's like for orange. every glow in the dark figure, not yeah. just your chase theme. Every glow in the dark figure is going to have uh, those clear bases. So that is really really cool. And yeah, I think um, it's it's just really nice to have a set that isn't Spider-Man or the Avengers or the X-Men. Don't get me wrong. I love all that stuff. But to give a character like Ghost Rider his own set, I absolutely love it. I think it's really, really cool. Yeah, absolutely. We move on to the Marvel Studios uh, Disney Plus next, way, next phase here. So this is going to be pulling characters from She-Hulk, Hawkeye, Baby Groot, those shorts, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, and of course, oh baby, Werewolf by Night, which I'm very excited for. Yes. And it also says a new support item for brick and mortar retailers. It is a Chase Booster OP kit. So, let's get into the details here. A premium prize that retailers will use for prestige prizing or release day support prizing. A, it's going to have a reusable cigar box packaging, which I, I didn't know if that was a tin, but you were like, it's probably going to be like a wooden box. Yeah, it'll be like, a, you know, it'll have some like gloss on it. If you guys are familiar with like baseball or basketball cards, how they come, you know, those ultra premium ones come in those like little briefcases almost. That is what I'm picturing. Some foam inserts, some figures shot in there, and then Calder will tell you what else. So we're going to get three random figures from the set and including one guaranteed chase figure, which is super cool. You get special dice, premium character cards, poker chip style bystander tokens. So I'm excited to see some more bystanders that are official poker chip bystanders, kind of like the ones they used to make and the ones that are just in the dice and token pack, which is really fun. And then they're going to be very, so they just say that these are going to be very limited quantity kits to support the player base here. And then also it's testing on a trial basis. So if you like these and you enjoy that this came out and you have a great success with it, if your store has a great success with it, if you enjoy it, make sure to tell WizKids, comment on their posts. Hey, we really, really enjoyed this guaranteed chase booster with special tokens, a cool box prizing. I don't know how anyone isn't going to love that. I think it's really, really cool to get, like, a special box, eh. to get tokens, to get dice. I think where people are going to draw issue with it is, like, the reselling market of it. People will find a way to be upset about it. But I think, personally, Maybe. this is really, really cool prizing. I absolutely love it. I, I'm excited to play for it. I hope we're one of the first people to like get to try. Oh, that. absolutely, yeah. Um, a random chase too, man. Like opening that is gonna be. You're gonna have to take your time, right? Oh. And then the premium dice and bystanders too. Oh, that's gonna be such a flex. I'm I, curious what it's gonna I look love like. It. I hope it's like dice from this show or this show or this show, or like be like a special Hawkeye dice, oh, maybe yeah, yeah. a special Werewolf by Night dice. You know, not just like, oh, it's the Dyson token pack, but a different color, you know? So I'd well, really hope if it's some was crazy that, stuff. Even if it is, it's And it's be like cool. gold-plated, I'd, oh, you know, that's totally fine. It, yeah, it feels nice and premium, some silvers, some Just gold. the box alone, like, regardless of what you pull, just owning that box, like, for me, that's... Uh, that's my new That might be lame, case. but, like, no, yeah, I that's, want it. That's my new, like, event carrying <laughs> case is my cool limited edition cigar box, if I can get it. Absolutely. So I really like this. I hope uh, I hope other people do too. I hope this becomes a, a standard thing. Oh, I I super hope so. We see some more sculpts from Disney Plus. So we see a cone shoe in his like every day I wake up, blah, blah, yeah. like when they're like reversing the time, the night sky, which is really cool. We see a Hulk and She Hulk duo figure where She Hulk's big got a old big boulder, yeah, big boulder, and we see an Elsa Bloodstone in black and white with her like. 
I don't even know what it is. Her weird little like rope thing that she throws and it like grabs something and pulls it towards her. Yeah, like her she little... uses it to like steal the moonstone or not the moonstone, gosh, the bloodstone. Ancient bat claw. Uh, yeah, her bat claw thing is really <laughs> cool. I can't tell from the picture. I think it goes behind her though, which is just not, you know. Mm. I mean, it makes sense. When you throw a rope. I'm... Well, no, she's throwing a chain, though. She's throwing a chain. It shouldn't go. It should be in front of her. No, no, like, it, oh, okay, yeah, I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah, I see it's what you behind mean. behind her legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the, the same issue I have with, like, the Wonder Woman throwing. Anyways, we're not going to get into it, but I'm very excited. Very excited. Uh, the hero looks Iconics. They just talk about a bunch of stuff here. So they're saying they're massively successful at launch. 95% of the products sold into retailers. All of the Death of Superman sold to retailers. Uh, the goal of creating entry points for stores fans in addition to upcoming starter sets. So that's the special Marvel DC four-figure, like, hyper good-looking starter set. They said they're collectible, they're playable. It allows them to experiment with th- fun themes that may not fit into a booster set, and they can take pieces that may have been convention only and lets them make more local hobby show uh, destinations for clicks. So who's ready for an Iconics dialed in so basically whiskids is saying here if you like the iconics and you're enjoying them well we can tell they're doing really well and hopefully we can make some more so i know a lot of people were complaining about a lot of the convention exclusives this weekend but imagine if all the cool iconics had also been convention exclusive but instead they're getting into your hands like if that wolverine on the bed had been convention exclusive that had been one people are clamoring for that thanos instead though they are easily available in your store so i think that's really awesome and yeah, the Iconics line, it's successful for a reason. It's oh, been yeah. awesome. I cannot, I'm still waiting. Can't wait to get the Nightfall set. That's like the biggest uh, hype piece for me this year. <laughs> so they made me the most hyped for what they showed because when we see the dialed in, if you're familiar with dialed in, you know they showed just a little part of the sculpt. And we see some blue pouches and some silver like magazines and like other like sticks and stuff coming out of the pouches. And everybody's like, oh, who is it? Who is it? And I didn't want to answer, but I was like, it's Peacemaker. It's Peacemaker. That's his belt. Uh, And they show off that they're going to be Peacemaker Iconics based off of the John Cena TV show. So this is amazing. Uh, It's Peacemaker doing the dance, too. So they're going to be two four-figure Iconics releases of Peacemaker in 2024. One is Peacemaker on the Wings of Eagly, and the other one is Peacemaker Project Butterfly. I am insanely excited for this. Peacemaker was an awesome show. It was a ton of fun. The fact that we get a dancing Peacemaker, and they showed a vigilante hiding behind the trash can, like in that yeah. one scene, is really, A couple really, really times, cool. too. Yeah, they really had fun with <laughs> that. Like, we really like our vigilante over yeah. here, so they, they cut back to the image of him. And yeah, it's uh, just him crouched behind it. Was he kind of waving as well? He was, I think, yeah. I think he's like crouched he's like and waving, or he's I like want to say. like over the lid. It was great. Really, really cool. So that's something that I think to be super, super excited about. If this means we can get more movie and TV show products, if this means we're getting more memes, I just, man, the Iconics line is just, it literally gets cooler and cooler. And we're about to talk about something that even if you're not yeah, interested in this it, one. it gets you like thinking about oh wow what else can we do so uh the game is afoot yeah that's right they are getting sherlock holmes iconics there's going to be two sherlocks in it they really get into detail on this one so the box is going to be the 221b baker street like door with the little handle and everything like that is such a nice display and then it says the figures that are included in the sherlock holmes iconics are sherlock holmes investigating Sherlock Holmes fighting, Dr. Watson, Professor Moriarty, Irene Adler, and the Hound of Baskerville, which is so dope. Um, The coolest part of this iconic set, though, we didn't get to see like a full-sized image of it, but the cards themselves, it looks like an open book, and it's written in this kind of cursive-style font. It's it's really stylized, guys. I absolutely love how they're going full throttle on that. Like the Thanos, we saw the kind of like cosmic text, you know, the very comic-y text. Yes, yeah. Which is very, very flavorful, very accurate to it. This is even more so that. So I hope they continue that trend. It's just really cool, guys. I absolutely love this one. The book covers, the silhouettes, it looks really, really awesome. Honestly, this to me is like, 
let's get i instantly was like let's get three musketeers obviously that was like the first play i was in but it's a classic book series we get the man in the iron mask we could get the evil cardinal we could get obviously the three musketeers themselves maybe d'artagnan i think that would be a fun one we also mentioned like just dracula Van i was gonna Helsing. say you want to know what i thought of instantly as, yeah uh, the biggest fan oh my gosh <laughs> Uh, yeah, Dracula would be super cool. As I would say, deb- debatably, debatable, the, deba- deba- <laughs> the biggest Dracula fan being me, of course. Mm. I also was that like, is debatable. Dracula is really cool. That is debatable. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, it would be cool, whatever. though, the kind of like adjacent characters you could put in uh, Dracula. You have a lot of options. Any of the monsters you can fit in there, oh, right? Oh, yeah. You know, and then uh, obviously you need to do Van Helsing. You have to. You It'd have be to do really Van Helsing. Really cool if they did like kind of maybe like a uh, a Civil War style sculpt with the you know the, you could put them together the, the Iron Man and Cap right yeah and it, if it was Van Helsing and also kind of like the new Superman Doomsday right yeah if it was maybe like Dracula in an action pose like trying to like block a, like a crucifix and Van Ooh. Helsing coming down on him Ooh, that could be I like really that a really lot. cool okay or I'm, maybe I'm if it was him. This makes Dracula look, like, lame, so I'm not about this one. I'm getting, like, stabbed in the chest or something. If Van Helsing was holding the crucifix out, and then Dracula's like, ah, you know, had his hands in front of his face. (laughs) Okay, I I would like that. I would dig that. Maybe both are hilarious and awesome. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. there's a lot you can look forward to with Iconics if Sherlock Holmes is getting the... Right? Yeah, just, like, classic books. I think we mentioned, like... It'd be really cool if we got American cryptids, you know. Yeah. I would love, like, the Jersey Devil, uh, the Banshee. Obviously, people are like Mothman, the Chupacabra. Like, if that's Is on the table. Man, does that count? No, I don't know. <laughs> I think he might be tied up with, like, video game rights or something. That's oh, the bummer about, like, no Slender idea. Man. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I think he's, I like, say, from the game where he... first. Oh, it where was he... a game. Okay. I want to say it's, it was a game first, and then he, like, did something. Like, Bloody Mary you could maybe do. Uh, so they announce a new hero click set. They even give like kind of a little timeline, which I'm now reasoning. I forgot to take a picture of, but whatever. Uh, so after Marvel next phase, I want to say next phase is set for a February, January release. Yeah. And then a, it was January. It was January. Yeah. And then the thing that followed, we'll talk. Is, is that about a March a release right here? I believe. So a Deadpool weapon X new booster set is going to be our March to April release next year. And we see a sculpt of Deadpool and Wolverine doing the Dillion, you son of a gun, is what I'll say for this podcast, from Predator, the Predator <laughs> handshake, uh, where they're like doing the big, yeah, you yeah, the biceps flexing handshake here between Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool's like arm is all gross and scarred up versus just being in his like whatever his sleeve, I guess. It's really funny to see his arms all ripped. Uh, so like that's hilarious. So getting a uh, Deadpool Weapon X theme, I've always loved. Every time they've made a Deadpool set, I've usually bought in, like a, I've only actually ever I bought a lot. It. I bought a lot. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> I enjoy it. The first Deadpool set is still my favorite over Deadpool X Force, just because it had yeah. more goofy, random Deadpool characters and like less X Men so much. So I hope we tap into since it's going to be Deadpool Weapon X, we're getting in a huge Weapon X theme. So I would like to see. Maybe the return of Weapon X with his dumb little rocket hands, and maybe those are really good. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we get to see like the Weapon X people, like Maverick, Omega Red, you know, all sorts I'm of random people. I'm hoping for some black and gray suits. Okay, yeah, like, that's okay. that's what I'd really like to see. But when you're when you're dealing with Deadpool, I have not read like anything in terms of recent Deadpool. But I would love to see him from the uh, the Bride of Dracula story. That's not okay. me. Okay, wow. That's not me trying to Always. be a Dracula fan. That's literally. I think, I think it's called the. Is it the Gauntlet of Dracula or the Bride of Dracula? It's one of the two. I don't remember. I don't um, know. but that's the one with Sheikla in the story. Right. And there's a lot of really cool moments in that. Like Deadpool gets decapitated. Personally, I don't know if that can ever make it into Hero Clicks, but Deadpool holding his own head. Is something that I would love to I don't see. Know, we've, we've gotten Headpool before, so maybe. I yeah. also wouldn't mind them remaking the the Deadpool core, getting like another yeah. Lady Deadpool, Dogpool, Headpool, since they haven't been made in nine or actually it'll be ten years yeah. when this Deadpool set comes out. So I wouldn't mind them getting remade. Um, so yeah, on the Wolverine side fun. of things, I also think. I mean, there's so many variations of Wolverine too. So yeah. who knows? I, I don't know what direction you go with that. Hopefully we get a few different costumes to choose from, though. I mean, in Wheels, we're already getting him on his bike. Yeah. So 
I feel like the possibilities are pretty wide open for this one. I mean, if there's any comic character that's had a ton of costumes, it's Wolverine. He had so yeah. many different looks over Give the years. Give us a brown suit one, we'll be happy. That'd be nice. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we saw anything else about Deadpool, but after Deadpool, we get to see the set that's coming out after it, and that is just a unnamed DC set. But the cool part about this is it says it's a never-before-done theme, which means it's and not it's just, just like, a confirmation on DC. Yeah, also that, alone that is just like, getting thumbs up for me. <laughs> a confirmed DC set is really cool. Uh, and it's going to be like, yeah, April, May-ish to June. I don't know. I can't really fully remember their thing. I forgot to take a uh, picture. This one was, I believe, June. June-ish. I okay. I want to say, we'll say around it was June. the last one on the timeline. I think it was June. Right. So this DC set, just literally all they say is it's coming out June, and it's not a theme we've done before. So that means it's not like Justice League. It's not Rebirth. It's not Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Teen Titans. It's none of that. So it, and it's not I'm all curious. villains because they and it's, yeah it's not notorious it's not War of Light sadly sadly that have been I've been okay with them reusing War of Light yeah. or any Lantern but uh, it's a theme totally new theme that they've never done before so is this the JSA set is this I mean, the is this we, we kind of got that with we Joker's got a Joker's Wild, Wild set though huh? I don't know. maybe I, I have no idea but... I've been trying to wrap my brain around like what's the never before seen DC. And I don't know, maybe maybe they forgot about some older sets. <laughs> I, I, I honestly have no clue. They were like, yes, we are making Legacy again. How did you know? <laughs> I like, thought maybe like, uh, my first thought was like, oh, maybe like a Crisis set. Oh, I was like, sure, they already crisis. did Crisis. But that was like one of the bigger events. Maybe yeah. uh, some ties back to like Starro. You know, there was recently, I don't know how recently, like the Dark Side Wars. Okay. They, they kind of did that, but like, okay, maybe the follow up to that is what they go for. Maybe the Watchmen, because they're DC properties technically. Oh. Maybe that's uh, coming. But we already had a, like a Watchmen box. No, never a Watchmen booster set. Though. Yeah, you know what I so, mean. Like maybe uh, I would. Man, maybe, I would like that. I'm thinking like along those like lines where it's like maybe there's something in DC that we haven't fully seen yet, and that's what the set will be based around like loosely or it's just a sub theme yeah i don't know but then also in february uh there oh, is yeah. a, a top secret valentine's day set um there was like no details on that it just said top secret uh i have no clue what that's gonna be are they with no like idea. with sherlock being made does that mean like a cupid figure <laughs> oh my gosh it's not out of the realm that'd of be really funny though, right? yeah yes we get cupid okay sure uh, another big one to mention that kind of goes with the, the Deadpool set, in between the two Peacemaker releases, so we're going to get like one Peacemaker release in May, I believe, and then a break, and then another Peacemaker release. So in that break, we are getting the first appearance of Wolverine, a oh, yeah. figure set. Simeon wouldn't have forgotten that Yeah, one. <laughs> he wouldn't have. No, he would have been like, uh, how we're going to mention the Wolverine set yet? And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot, man, bro. They even uh, uh, yeah. dropped what figures were in that yeah, one. Yeah, they did, yeah. They said Wolverine, Hulk, Wendigo. Yeah, uh, which, which makes sense. That's the huge on all of that. That's, that's the, really cool. Whatever, that's the Hulk 181 lineup of cast and crew of people that were beating 19, the heck out of each other. 64 or something. Eight million years ago, basically. Eight million years yeah, ago. Yeah. Forever. Um, but then they ended the fan appreciation by giving, uh, they did a little bit of trivia in there. A lot of the dials in, if you could guess the sculpt right, you had a booster of A60. But then they just went out and handed everybody a booster of X of Swords, which was super cool. It was crazy. That was such a big box of Dude, product. That was awesome. <laughs> and I was like, they're not really. I thought they were joking. D yeah. I was like, wow. This, they literally just gave it to everybody. And then, since they had some left over, and you guys already knew this if you followed us on Facebook, but we were able to get the rest of the X of Swords. I'm like, hey, can we use this to give it away to the community? And they were like, absolutely. So Fans appreciating fans, if ex you will. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> fans so, for the fans. I'll have a link in the podcast description below to the video on YouTube. But all you have to do to enter this giveaway, and one person's getting it all. There is some donations from our X of Swords OP kit winnings. All of the tarot cards from X of Swords and some boosters and that some we already There's some good ones opened. in there, too. Like, some uh, really good ones. I think there's a couple High Priestess in those. Yeah. Uh, there's some Queen of Wands. There's some High yeah. Priestesses in there. There's some really good ones. There's a lot of the LE figures that we have donated, and then it is 16 boosters. So we'll have a brick yeah. and six raw, just floating around boosters <laughs> here. By uh, the end of two X-Slop events, we, we definitely had some extras 
of uh, the pricing. Right. So. so all you have to do is go to that video and comment what set you're excited for, Notorious or Wheels, and then why you're excited for it. Maybe a figure specifically you're excited for, some of the effects, the theme, whatever. Just go to that video, comment below, feel free to watch all of it so you just fully understand. But you only have until this Friday, and that's when we're going to be doing the raffle Ooh. and giving it away and like doing a little random name generator here. Also, out who gets it. Don't forget to subscribe to Dial H on YouTube. Oh, of course. We've got some fun stuff coming out. A uh, little ad read, I guess, for ourselves here. For sure. <laughs> um, I just put up the top four match with uh, Lucas and Nate last night uh, as of recording this because we literally just got home last night, guys. We're still on go. It, the, the tank ain't empty. And then tonight I'll be uploading the finals match as well. So just stay tuned for that um and put some respect on mission points but we'll get into Absolutely. that in a bit here i think that's it for the fan appreciation event right that is it yeah we saw all sorts of insanely cool stuff so let's go ahead and jump into the saturday saturday was well, my qual oh no time out what okay. was the thing that uh excited you the most at everything was it peacemaker oh, it's peacemaker yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> without a doubt it's peacemaker i'm i will run the heck out of those four or eight figures for each in those box sets. I'm just so pumped. The fact we get a dancing peacemaker, more than likely like a normal peacemaker. I really hope it's X-ray helmet with the shotgun and uh, Ooh, throws his homemade bomb that, would be so that he just cool, duct tapes. Dude. Yeah, like, ah, uh, man, I'm so excited. What what made you the most happy an about eagly, an eagly mechanic that drops off the helmet would be, oh, so, be so dope, cool, dude. And like, I believe in the show, like the eagly screws up a bit. It right? does. It yeah. does. Yeah. So if it was maybe a bit random. Why did you do and that? Damage your own people or something. Uh, I or uh, Peacemaker with the shield would be cool. Yeah, too. dude. He that has would so be many cool. different iterations in just that show alone. I would love to see it. Yeah, Peacemaker with the shield would be so dope. Also, a mechanic where, uh, like, I can't remember the name of them. Like the alien bugs. Like, oh, come just out the of the butterflies. Yeah. yeah, the butterflies. Thank you. Um, I think a mechanic like that where, you know, when somebody is like KO'd, they can come out and maybe, okay, yeah. maybe a kind of like Z-Virus effect okay. too or something. I think there's a lot of potential for that set to be really cool mechanically. What about a butterfly figure that's like an entity that sits on the oh. sideline and possesses a figure? And then when that figure dies, it comes out. Yeah, maybe like when you KO an opposing figure, Ooh, it can go. go to the sideline and start yeah. clicking them back up. And then it comes to your force or something. Hmm, that I don't know. pretty cool. That is right? really cool, yeah. Yeah. So, I think we'll uh, see. what excited me the most, I mean, the Sherlock thing is really, really cool. Just, I, I love the stylized clicks, guys, the animated series, the TMNT Unplugged. I mean, all the just text changes on these Iconics figures. Sherlock is probably up there for me, but I also am just so, so, so excited for Deceased and the Black Lantern. So I think I have to say that Joker just okay. because I feel like okay. he's going to be nasty in game, man. There's something telling me he's just going to be... He's going to be strong, and I'm going to want to play him a lot. <laughs> all right. All right. So, yeah, fan appreciation. One of the best ones ever, I would say. And I can't yeah, wait to see what they have to show off at Worlds because this was already so good without even really seeing a dial. No Just dials. Like, yeah. Other than the Sherlock card. Yeah, that a little bit of the it. Sherlock card. It was pretty small, but you get, like, the idea of what's going on there. But which seeing is really the cool. physical figures too, like going up to the oh. desk afterwards and seeing the Namor and the Ghost Dude. Rider and the Wolverine. Um, that Namor on the shark others? might be one of the best. We saw Slepnir. Oh yeah, the big the, old yeah. Odin. Odin's big old horse, big eight legged, fifteen yeah, legged horse. To see the figures ahead of time and just like pick them up and really feel like the quality of the product. Oh, was, they're so uh, heavy. They're so dope. Yeah, and. Man, like coming in those boxes, it's like you're really not going to have to worry about any of them breaking, which is also like so big time. I really like that. I like that they're taking that extra provision to keep your product safe. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially when they're these big, also, nice Also, those sculpts. boosters are way more fun to open. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, one at a time you're pulling them out. You're like, ooh, ooh. hey, okay. <laughs> and that's what I was talking about a little bit when I had a – I bought some White Schwartz card packs and was like opening them. Like, man, there's something so fun about opening like – packs of cards more so than Heroclix because it's that one at a time. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Yeah. Versus Heroclix, like, you rip it, and you're like, ah, bad, 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 bad. Oh, Chase. You know, it's just like... <laughs> I like how we've been doing it recently on the channel. I like those we, a lot, where too. Where we pull it out one figure at a time. One figure at a time. Those it's have like, been ooh, fun. the booster battles. Those yeah. have been hilarious. <laughs> so, moving on to the next day, really quick, while 
I had to just run and go into my qualifier on Saturday. We didn't even stop the car. No, I just, it was like, slow, 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 slow. All right, go, 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 run, run. So I was dressed up in my U.S. agent cosplay. This is its first, this is maiden voyage here that we finally wore it off. Uh, and it was really cool. So being able to wear that, play in a qualifier, and then eventually, spoiler alert for the qualifier, play in nationals later that day was a ton of fun. But WizKids changed their case a little bit, and they showed off the Ultra Chase, confirmed now Ooh. Ultra Chase, Zod Ursa Non figure. Yeah, it's 70 points, silver ring like all Ultra Chases, the four improved range, movement, triple bolts, improved movement, trait. traits, and then just the Superman enemy team ability. No cosmic energy or anything crazy like that. So I'm excited to see what that figure is going to do. I'm really, really curious. So I'm guessing some kind of bystander generation. If there's three yeah. people on the sculpt, I think it's fair. The fact that there's no main set, yeah, um, there's no main Ursa set or non, but there's a Zod. Maybe they turn into Zod and maybe make they make an Ursa non bystander. Oh yeah, like maybe KO'd. Zod has that mechanic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll have Some to see. kind of generation mechanic though is what I'm leaning towards. Three people on a base, like I feel like you kind of have to. Yeah. And this is the. Man, this is the first time we've had three people on a base since Avengers Prime? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So this is really cool, man. I thought about that the other day. I was like, okay, so we're revisiting that. Yeah, so I we dig can it. get back into it. And I, I love that. So in my qualifier, I'm not going to run into all of my games, but I'll just say a oh, shout-out, Josiah, listener of the show. we got to me... talk about one game, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the, the second game of your qualifier. You go ahead. Oh, okay. But don't okay, forget about for that sure. one because okay. Simeon and I were right there. <laughs> okay, okay, Absolutely. Uh, so like this first game was just like uh, so this is how we're gonna start off today. I had to play against World's Finest Prime Spider Man. Uh, my team, <laughs> just your two least favorite characters. I know I was they like, just really? took Calder and threw him in the swamp immediately. <sighs> They're like, all right, go ahead, dude, instantly. So my team was literally the same as my South Dakota State's team. Uh, we had Sakarian Iron Man Cloak, the Empire Captain America that gets to make a free attack. My boy. Chip with the ring, Tempo, the Flash, Iron Spider with the Emo mod, Saint Walker ring, Star Sapphire ring, my sideline, Scrappy Doo, Scroll Spy, War Machine, Agent Coulson, and then I just had the uh, Smoky Foot cap on my sideline as my cheerleader for that day. The only change I did was I added a two by one elevated instead of having the pool of lava, and then I had my standard object and my elevated round platform. So. The idea, and I was able to fully do it against Josiah in the first round, was, okay, Prime Spider-Man's out. I can get rid of Super Senses, but I have to activate Cap in order to get rid of his Impervious. So we did a hypersonic speed with Super Strength on Sackman to move, pick up the object, the Elevated, then second move, put it under Captain America, and then sidestep, pull it out from under Captain America, deals him one damage, puts him on his exploit click. That's just, that's just the way I've used to activate people. I think you've used it to activate people oh, yeah. before. So I think that's A60 kind of the way Take a look at him. Uh, just to activate like people nowadays, to activate your friendly characters. It's faster, it works right away, versus Pool of Lava waiting for the end of your turn. Um, but it works out, and it's really fun. Uh, this same thing can be done with like some TKs and other stuff. It doesn't have to be like this hypersonic speed, super strength. It's all you need to do is put the character under it, yoink it out from under him. However you do that works. So uh, first game against Josiah, I was able to, you know, I just knew the team like the back of my hand, and I was able to fully use it. And it was pretty good, and it was awesome just playing against a listener. So that was a ton of fun. The second game versus Nate White was really, really tough. He... Let me choose map, so he got to go first, and he kept his Prime Spider-Man back in his starting area, just totally FTI, first turn immune, and then he moved his team up defensive with being around Iron Inquisitor, but like, here's my team, hit me with your best shot, and then we'll see who can, you know, trade blow for blow and what happens here, so... He had, you know, Scary and Iron Man. He had Prime Spider-Man at full. He had Carnage Silver Surfer, which is miserable. I should have killed him right away. Oh my gosh, I should have killed him right away, but we didn't. It's so tough to commit uh, to that, though. And then, yeah, Mephisto, A60 swap, like I said. And then he had the Green Lantern, KCGL. So my opening move was just like, I got to kill stuff. I got to get rid of it. I think opening move, I kill Sakarian Iron Man. I kill KCGL. And, and I you kill have Mephisto. to do that. If you don't kill the Sakarian Iron Man, like an <sighs> energy explosion against your team is just like lights It's brutal. Out. An energy explosion, a little pulse wave force blast against my team is brutal. So you kind of have to, I feel like, if I'm in your situation, I feel like I'm doing the exact same thing. Carnage Silver yeah. Surfer, there's a chance he just shape changes out. 
Because you have tempo to shut the super senses off. We have the emo mod. The emo mod's just trickier to make yeah. sure it works with me carrying everybody. And then you're sacrificing uh, bonuses. I think exactly, carrying yeah. Iron Man specifically against your team is just... I mean, Pulse Wave, Energy Explosion, they just rip your team so hard, man. It does. It really does. Um, so after that, it was it was a good back and forth, though. In I walked by after turn one, called her get some kills... And then I see it's like, all right, here comes Prime Spider-Man, bash, bash. Here comes Carnage Silver Server, bash, bash. I just walk away. I'm like, oh, that boy's cooked. That's how I felt too. I was like, man, I think <laughs> walk I'm back ten I'm minutes done later for. though, and it's like, you know, I think it's at this point it's like a three v three. Like Calder's got like uh, Sackman, you've got Star, Star Sapphire, Sapphire, and uh, I had one more piece. I don't know. I can't remember if it was a construct drop or if it was like Captain America. Honest, I don't think it was Cap. No, I think Cap, Cap got, died. Cap got one shot. Um, don't remind me. Don't remind me. Anyway, he's got his Prime Spider-Man. He's got Carnage Surfer. And uh, he ends up killing the Prime Spider-Man. I'm like, oh, my God, he could take this. And then I looked at Carnage Silver Surfer's dial, see his top click, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe not. At that point, it was uh, it was Survive because I had killed more of his team than he had of mine. So like Carnage Surfer's just 50 points, even though he's now 175 or whatever, yeah. you know, um, which is tough. But I had still had carried Iron Man. I had... Uh, What's her face left? Star Sapphire, and then apparently somebody else. I honestly don't even remember. But it literally came down to Sackman hit some great attacks against him. I think maybe I had um, Iron Spider alive. He's oh, stuck yeah, around. He stuck around yeah. for a while. So Iron Spider was able to do some damage. Sackman was able to do some damage. We got him below his fifty point line, um, and we just, <laughs> we just couldn't uh, couldn't seal the deal there. And eventually it came down to he killed Sakarian Iron Man, he killed her, he killed everybody else. And I was like, oh, I'm going to split into Scrappy, I'm going to split into War Machine just to see if we can make some stuff happen. And we weren't able to. But I rotated Mephisto, I killed his A60, I got 280 points. Which in a great, three, which great is, loss to Man, take. an insane loss. So going into the third round, I'm like, well, all I have to do is win. Oh, and I got, the detail about the second round. Though, oh, yeah. Is, Calder found himself in a sticky situation, and his chainsaw, oh, yeah. his boot are dead. And I'm looking at Simeon, I was like, dude, he can just stop sign in Carnage Surfer. And then Simeon says to me, he's like, Calder's not that kind of guy. <laughs> he, he's not going to do that play. And I was like, man, if he does, he's got a, he's got a shot. He's, he can waste Prime Spider-Man's action, because then he'll have to break the barrier for Carnage Surfer to get out. And then Calder ends up making the play, and we're both just like, no way. <laughs> so, that was really funny. That was good, yeah. And I, I don't always bring in stop signs, and it's usually like don't first use it turn a ton. or last ditch, right? Yeah, that's almost always it. It's like first turn, barrier myself in, be protected, or it's like last thing. It's like, man, you only got one or two guys. Let's make you it know, tough. Hash it out. So, but yeah, Spider Man just being able to like, all right, I'll just destroy it. I was like, ah, I yeah. wish I would have loved to have like a breather turn where like maybe you're double tokened, you have to just take a breath mm -hmm. uh, or something, and I could just go but nah i mean prime spidey is just insane and so is that carnage surfer but uh taking that loss i didn't feel bad at all Nate no. white's a great player and he, he was the only losses i took that day as we'll get into so i really don't mind it whatsoever but being able to get you know qualified for u.s nationals making top 16 i felt really really good going into the uh going into the day and we we had some fun being the i was bragging i wasn't bragging but i was joking around last night like this is my last dinner as a yeah. not a u.s national champion <laughs> last night of sleep before i'm a yeah, national yeah. champion <laughs> that was a ton of fun uh so i'm just gonna read off this is in no particular order the seating chart for top 16 so uh isaac arnold berkovitz john burgess patrick frazier robert gallagher josafa avs uh, alex mater jalen major Alyssa mcneil calder ness hey hey daniel powell sam powell uh, Ken Small, Jackson Smith, Lucas, Tom Van Holland, TJ Wheeler, and Nate White. Oh, it is in an order. It's alphabetical by last name. Okay. Wow, I just realized that. That's how they that's how they did it. But the seating <laughs> was still random. So it just took all of our qualifiers, ignored all of our points, and then just jumbled us up into top 16. Uh, and then we did Swiss. So two rounds of Swiss in top 16. And then a cut single elimination to top eight. It was a really interesting tournament structure. And I think it utilized their space best. People can maybe be like this is a really weird way to do a tournament but when we only have such limited space that gen con is giving yeah. euro clicks players it was packed this year guys it made the most of it especially when dice masters needs to have their nationals and world tournaments that same weekend plus x of yeah. swords events plus battle royals plus pulp and theme and silver 
I think this is the best way to do it, and WizKids did the best with the space they were allotted from Gen Con. So, my first first game was literally against Nate White again, and I won map, and I was I like, okay. I think you, you might have... Okay, if we look at everybody who played the amount of games you did, you oh, yeah. might have played against Prime Spider-Man the most. I sure as heck might have. Uh, let me think. Half your matches? Half my matches were Prime Spider-Man, yeah. And there was like... I think there was only two people playing it in your qualifier day. And was it really? I played against the only two people playing I it? think so. That's really annoying. That's really and then, cool. Uh, I mean, the that's top, really cool. Top 16, let's see. There's Alex, Isaac, Nate, Jackson. Yeah. Um, I think Pat. Was Pat Frazier? Yeah, Pat. So I think five of the 16 were playing Prime Spider-Man? I don't remember. I'm pretty that's sure. Tough. I know all five of those guys were. I'm not sure yeah. if anybody else was. Um, sorry if I missed you. Yeah. Oh, and just to get my last qualifier game, shout out Corey Long. I love the Gulf Coast Avengers guys. Literally all those guys are really cool. I super they enjoy are. talking super with them nice. every time I see him at an event. So, like, that was a ton of fun. He was – it was almost a mirror match, but he was playing – so very similar to my team, not playing Captain America, playing St. Walker at full for that big crit chance, and then having Annihilation on his team instead of Star, Star Sapphire. So it was like St. Walker, Chip, he had Scaring Iron Man – um, he had the Flash. Flash had, like, Necro Sword. Like, it was a good team. He had a good Alpha. I oh, have a really? good Alpha. Oh, really? Necro Sword on Flash? Yeah. I did not see that. Yeah. That was like, okay, that's a little spooky. And then, of Big course, value. He had, he had Iron Spider. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I honestly, I was like, you know, uh, Annihilation has no rollouts. And I can just outwit her. And I was like, that's a really easy 75 points to kill. I mean, deep yeah. dial, sure. But I was like, man, I'm, I got to do this. And that just put me up on points, and then I was able to take it from there. But it was still a good game. It was a good back and forth, and I super, super enjoyed it. He missed a lot of attacks. He had one turn where it was like fours, Ooh. threes, twos, and I was like, dude, that sucks. Like, he went for the energy explosion on my team with Scaring Iron Man, which is literally my nightmare scenario. That's the nail in the coffin. And then, yeah, he had the the 10 up crit hit chance, right, with, uh, with St. Walker. And I'm just like, man, if he crits my entire team, I'm cooked. I'm done for. And it was like three, prob four and i'm like the 16 no he hit like a five and i was like does 17 hit anything and i was like no (laughs) and it was didn't even hit captain america because he was still an 18 uh or 16 esd (laughs) top dial (laughs) that's like that's dirt that's wild yeah dude (laughs) so but we had a good game and then yeah jumping into it my first round was another i had to play against nate white again which i was just like please stop putting me against prime spider-man oh my gosh um so, you know, everybody else in the universe, you know, is like, oh, Prime Spider-Man. I don't know if he's the best Prime. I don't know if he should really be played that much. Blah, 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 blah for other podcasts and everything that are like that. But me, I've been a Prime Spidey hater since day one. I knew this he was true. annoying. I can confirm that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, can confirm I knew that. I'm like, I'm not going to enjoy playing against this piece. And I was correct. I don't enjoy playing against this piece. And I had to play against it the most. And I'm like, I don't know how you can't not be like Prime Spider-Man's the real deal. He messes fools up. And he's he's good. He's got good defense, and he's got good offense. And it was really funny how when he first came out, a lot of the sentiment towards him was, "Oh, he'll be cool. You know, he'll probably be a casual piece." Yeah. And uh, I had gone on copy and clicks and said, like, I don't know. I feel like this guy could, you know, be fringe competitive. Yeah. And then it turns out he's just like Sky Tyrant's second coming. Like, yeah. The guy yeah. is so nasty. And uh, I, I mean, I'm not like called it. I love playing him. I think he's B.A. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good save. Uh, so, yeah, my first game is Nate. Good I save? Just... What do you mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, just good reference. Good reference. Very <laughs> yeah, cool. Very you, cool. Yeah, you. very cool. Uh, so, my game against Nate, I, I flubbed this one. I should have taken him more. And it's weird. It's a small map. I probably should have chose map and let him go first, honestly. I probably That's his should biggest just... advantage, though, is Spider Prime can go on any map yeah. and get wherever he, he wants to go. Mess you up. And Places I was like... elevated wherever. Wall yeah. crawler, sidestep, free move, or costed move, charge flurry. Like, you can't escape this guy. Absolutely. If he wants to make an attack on whoever, he will. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, he took a very defensive turn, and I was like, I can't kill anything in that bubble it's too much work to get around the barrier too much work to get around this that and the other thing 
Um, and I probably could have literally taken the same defense if I wanted to and try to play defensively. But I was like, nope, we just got to score points. We are in the do or die top 16. I need to get one win or at least two wins. You're automatically in or one win, one loss, a bunch of points. You know, it's so like that was my mindset going into it. So I was like, all right, let's make it happen. So uh, I went for the bait. I crit missed my sack man against his and a lot of other attacks didn't go my way. And I wasn't even able to kill sack right away, which sucked. And the game just fell apart from there. Um, I only scored 85 points against him, which was a huge bummer. Uh, and that's just the way it went. So I, I'm never going to be one of those people that, yeah, I missed some attacks, but I'm never going to blame dice. It's a dice game. You can never be like, I'm going to hit every single attack and every single rollout in the game. To say something like that is absolutely ridiculous, and I'm really tired of that excuse that competitive players use all the time. Yes, you misplay. And you know what? I think I misplayed, and I think Daniel Powell can misplay, Lucas Van Hollen can misplay, and anybody else that complains about dice, and it's more than just them, can all 100% misplay. So to act like you're perfect and that just your dice made you lose, um, that's ridiculous in a dice game. So anyways, yeah, I misplayed, and then I didn't get enough points from it, but I just I wanted to run and gun and see what happened, and it just didn't go my way because I messed up. My next game was against Sam Powell, and we were both in the same boat, right? Low point losses in our first round of Swiss, which means we need to totally clear points one or the other. And she had a very defensive team. She has that uh, Scarlet Witch rune marker in in front of her team. We're on negative zone. Uh, all this mad gym barrier, stop sign barrier, all this. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll slowly move up sack man. And I forgot to barrier in my other team as I moved up Sackman into a defensive position. And I could have had the actions to barrier up my team. But this allowed her to get a shot. I would like to say I was smart enough to be like, yeah, I totally let her have an opening so she would overreach her Sackman so I could kill him. Uh, but that's not at all what happened. I just totally forgot to barrier my team. So she overreaches Sackman, sends him in there. Uh, he kills Star Sapphire. And I'm like, okay. And when I was looking at my team, I was like, well, she can't kill Steve, which is the only thing that's worth Sackman's points, right? That's 50. My Sackman, she wasn't going to kill. So it just comes down to, well, you only could kill 25 points, but then you can let me have 55 points right there by killing your Sackman, which is just what I went for and did. And, you know, I make like five, six attacks in a turn. I have ways to deal free damage with knockback from boots. Um, so, you know, hitting his high defense was just kind of a thing where it's like, I'm rolling enough dice. I hope I hit. I was able to, and then we were able to nickel and dime sack man down. So it put me in the lead, and then it puts her in the position where she needs to be more aggressive and less defensive. Hero clicks is not like, I mean, sure, you want to play defensively, but it's not a defensive game. You have to kill things to get points no, to win the game. On top of that, I think just in general, with everything coming out, you know, it's, it's just trending towards offense. It's been yeah. trending towards offense with... I mean, just close combat figures being stronger, I think that alone makes uh, like defensive strategies less capable. We could go really deep into we, this, we really but could. I'm not going to. I, I just think uh, defense right now is a much higher gamble because you're, you're essentially betting against rather than betting on. And if you're yeah. betting on, you have agency. Agency gives you opportunity to, you know take advantage of certain situations as opposed to waiting for the advantage to arise. Right. So I think it's better to act than to wait for someone else to act. Hundred percent. General philosophy for hero. Proactive players. versus reactive. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. So that game I ended up winning with only a hundred and like thirty points. So we both were hey, just beating like, a Scarlet Witch though is pretty cool. It is, yeah, yeah. So like yeah, and eventually she moved out her Scarlet Witch. This is where I got the rest of my points. So she moved out Scarlet Witch, went for a shot uh, I mean, shot sack man. It's not a great shot because it's like you're not going to kill him. But you know, she at least came to me. She showed that aggression there and was like, "All right, I'm going to you." And then I was able to one turn Scarlet Witch. I've got the emo mod. I've got tempo. You know, no rollouts. I've got dudes that hit for more than three damage, so the inv the invincible didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was it was a quick bada bing bada boom mess up Scarlet Witch. You know, I did hit a super senses on her next turn. That last action was called, but those points wouldn't have put her in the in the top. But it was fun. Sam was a great person to play against. You know, we had a fun little back and forth about, like, the dice cup and how I made the fun, like, dice rolling video, making fun of people that roll dice literally every way possible. Um, she's like, see, dice cup players are, you know, we're not just slamming it around. I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're right. It was it was good. So Yeah, you're you're not a dice tower player, so it's okay. That's very true. Yeah, dice towers, you know, may not Sorry. have been voted the worst, but IMO, uh, you, the worst. Uh, yeah, you're public enemy number one yeah. still. In the hero click scene, it takes forever. It We've takes got so your long. number. It takes so long. <laughs> 
So they cut us into top eight and bottom eight. So just to read off your bottom eights in ranking. So this would be ninth place first. Uh, Ken Small, Patrick Frazier, Calderness, hey, that's me. Daniel Powell, John Burgess, Jackson Smith, Alyssa McNeil, and Sam Powell. So that is your... Wait, hold up. What's I up? didn't notice this. So oh. for, for bottom cut for ninth through 16th, are you the highest ranked podcaster? You've got Jackson with oh. JSA. <laughs> you got Dale Powell and Sam Powell with Click Stop. And Dial H. Dial H. The wow, look at us. <laughs> we may not just talk the talk, but it seems we walk the walk. In 9th to 16th In place. In the 9th to 16th place. <laughs> I uh, think, uh, yeah, okay, Lucas, Lucas, Lucas Van wins. Being yeah, the he's the best podcaster. podcaster. Yeah, okay. well, I wouldn't say best podcaster. I best, don't know about that. Best player. Best player podcaster, sure, yeah. that actually competed. Uh, and, you know, shout out to some of those podcasters that didn't even qualify for nationals, like uh, Scott Crampton and several others. I'm just going to He made a him. sacrifice. He made a sacrifice. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Wrestling. Greater Wrestling. Than oh, that's sign. right. He did. He just didn't yeah. show up. That's right. Failure to uh, Failure to show. Anyways, so that was your bottom eight. I, I'm happy. I love the list of names, this top 16, these amazing players, everybody that showed up and played. I was impressed. So who is your top eight? So going into top eight, we had Nate. When this is one through eight here, Nate White, uh, Josafa Avs, Alex Mater, Robert Gallagher, Lucas Van Holland, Jalen Major, Isaac Arnold Berkowitz, and TJ Wheeler. Uh, I believe Top teams. It's dude. These are all great players. Nasty They're all teams. great teams. I was like, I was super duper I mean, impressed. Uh, so if we look at that too, it's like Nate White, Spider Prime, Josafa was playing Mad Jim, Alex Mater, Spider Prime, Robert Gallagher. I think I, he just had Destroyer on the sideline because his team is, is all the apocalypses. And, and one Jalen had, I believe, Hulk. Prime Hulk. Yeah, yeah, Hulk. Isaac was playing Prime Spider Man and TJ. Oh, sorry, TJ. I don't, I don't remember what your build was. Feel bad. Uh, but yeah, guys, I mean, you know, it used to be just Jim or Destroyer. Now we have a few new players, Spider-Man, occasionally Hulk. It's it's pretty pretty stiff in competition. I think you can make an argument for any of them. The TJ didn't have, like, Absorbing Man or something, did he? I don't know. That's what I was trying to I don't to, remember like, his build. Find the first qualifier on their, on their website. Ooh, TJ Wheeler had... Who's his prime? Mad Jim. Mad Jim, okay. Prime so is Mad Jim. Couple in Mad his Jims. qualifier, at least. I don't know if he changed teams or not, but I would assume it's relatively the same. If he did, I apologize. But so yeah. three Spider-Mans, two Mad Jims, one Hulk, one Destroyer. One Batman. One Batman. Yeah. Wow. There you guys go. Spider-Man is becoming the majority. Uh, yeah. Let us know how you feel about that. I mean, Spider-Man just won the national champion or national championship. That was Alex Mater. Uh, he beat Man, out Lucas. I can't believe we just spoiled it. We just oh. we, we totally skipped top four. Uh, it was Alex versus Isaac in top four after top eight was over, and then it was Lucas versus Nate White. And Lucas was you able can watch to watch uh, that match. You can yeah, you can watch it. So j- check out the Lucas versus Nate White match. And then yeah, Alex played against Lucas. So mission points getting second place is so cool. Yeah, love first, it. First of all, all and of, Green Lantern Batman all of us getting second place. We're so stoked. We were like Alex and Lucas, you know, South Dakota boys. I mean, Lucas, uh, you know, plays in South Dakota, lives in He's Minnesota. He's a South Dakota boy, but you know, South Dakota boy. Alex Mater, South Dakota boy. Rainbow Comics represent uh, the fact that those guys were the top two in all of U.S. nationals in America. That's pretty dang cool. I'm pretty really cool, excited yeah. about that. I so, like, that. like the fact that we like we see these guys in a regular ish basis and like hang out with them is so dope. So, seriously, so proud of them. I, you know, Alex. We talked to Alex a little bit. You can see that in my little vlog video I did for the uh, U.S. national results video on our YouTube. But I got just a quick little one minute, you know, interview with him. It was just real casual. It was real quick. Right after he won, and he was like, "I'm in shock. Honestly, this is so cool. This is insane." You know, he was just so, so grateful to be a winner. And, like, man, Alex just, you know, he's an awesome player. He got back into the game within these last, like, year and a half to two years. I was playing against Alex Mater during, like, No Man's Land. Yeah. And I think it was around then that he retired and he came back. I want to say around, like, Rise and Fall. That's what I want to say, too. Like, he came back in full force. I think, like, Blackheart. Yeah, he played a lot of Blackheart. Blackheart was his big first one. But yeah, he came back and we're like, yeah, you know, check out, this was like prior to HC units, but it's like, yeah, HC realms, you can see like previews and stuff. He's like, oh, really? Yeah. So this guy was like, you know, new, he was fresh back to the game and here he is like 
I mean, he did not have easy matchups either. He took down no. Isaac AB in uh, top four, and that was a mirror match as well, like very close to a mirror match with uh, the Spider Prime A60 builds. And then, yeah, beating mission points in the finals as well. Um, some interesting notes there. You know, Alex – or Lucas had asked Alex jokingly, like, do you want to roll off? And Alex said, well, we basically are going to, uh, referring to the map roll. Yeah. And so Alex won map, took him to a smaller map. This gives him a huge advantage against mission points because obviously mission points does not want to interact battle-wise. They want to rack up mission points and have you take as much time as possible to get to them. Yeah. So winning map there was huge for him. Um, obviously, there's more to it than that. Like, Lucas did still have, like, a fighting chance, and things cracked Alex's way. He played a great game. He had a really cool opener. You guys will see this gameplay video uh, very soon. I'll get that uploaded tonight. So, uh, yeah, just be mindful of the first play that Alex makes. I think that's a separation that a lot of people wouldn't do. They just wouldn't think to, or they'd be too greedy to make that play. So, Absolutely. congratulations, Alex. And, very quickly, uh, that second day as well, I also played in another X of Swords event. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, this is like pulling the slot machine and seeing all the sevens across it. Or well, What's better? Is it the bar or the seven? The bar. The you bar is the, the best bar? one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like, this. that's basically what happened to me. First round, pull rare Wolverine, end up still getting second just because, you know, whatever. I was playing against Mr. Sinister. I hate that figure. I never want to see him again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the person ahead of me drafts Mr. Sinister, so I take Soul Sword. I end up drafting Soul Sword round one. Round two, pull Wolverine again, this time with a Soul Sword. And it's just like, you have to be kidding me. This is amazing. Uh, just absolutely like clobber that game. I think I scored close to like 800, 700 points. And I end up walking away with another Soul Sword. Third match, I pulled the Super Rare Famine, who is. I mean, he's pretty solid. Like, four pen damage in the in the Battle Royale format is really solid, but he just falls off super, super quick. Uh, it was a it was a tough-fought match. There were definitely some highlights there. But the big thing is, took first place, and I end up drafting a, you guessed it, Soul Sword. So <laughs> I walked away from an X of Swords event with three Soul Swords, which I owned none of. And playing in those events, that's the biggest thing I wanted was just a singular one. So to get three is super cool. And then on top of that, I got to walk away with an Apocalypse, which was a figure that never wanted to buy, but I'm so happy to own. Love the sculpt. Love the character. It was really cool. And Simeon also played in that event with me. He took second, took home the Genesis. So that was uh, it was really cool. Simeon and I got to play a couple matches together. Nice. Right on. I love to see that. Yeah, we tried in our first day. Like, oh, let's all play in the first BR together. Then we instantly all went our separate ways. Yeah, never, never saw each other again. So it was cool to see that you guys were able to play like with each other again. Yeah. That was like a ton of fun. It was fun. I will say, mini shout out to that day. Uh, U.S. Agent somehow gets like more respect than John Walker as Captain America. Somehow. Like as as a <laughs> like when I'm in that costume, and I had one guy stop me and be like, "Yo, man, U.S. Agent's like." you know, my probably second favorite comic character. And he was like, we really, we talked it up a little bit. And he was like, really cool guy. His first favorite being like Beta Ray Bill. And I'm just like, man, he just likes ballers. I see how yeah, it is, you know. Offbeat. He just got, yeah, that good offbeat comic book character taste. So like, that was a ton of fun. Uh, I had a few other people like stop me and be like, yo, that's like awesome costume and everything. So I really appreciated that. Everybody's shouting that out every day. So that was really cool. To Ooh, go into. Another shout out, uh, Joe Alves. Thank you for yeah. giving me a con exclusive spider, the uh, robot. Um, Luke was really looking for one of those, never found one, and Joe just straight up handed it to me. So, yeah, that was really cool. So dope. Thank you so much, Joe. There's also a uh, Prince and Pulp tournament going on that day as well during Nationals. I want to shout out, let's see. Silver Age winner was Wesley Robertson. So he silver surfed his way to victory. So that was really cool that he got the day four final Silver Age winner. Who was our day three? That was, this would be during Nationals. That was Jay Major winning Silver Age. Let's, like let's look at this. Four APOX. Let's see. What is this, Mr. 55 Bad APOX and 55 here. Genesis yeah. and 55 Soul Swords. I think the only Silver Age element is the like yeah, two, two black, black Vulcans, Vulcans and then Firestorm. Is that a Brainiac? Is that yeah. is that his Silver Age? That's funny. 
still using the legacy for carnage i think you could go either way on carnage honestly i think both are just really strong i think i like the legacy card personally you like the legacy card more i like making the bystanders i think they're really cool um next up we had our day four theme winners so this is josiah again which is like super cool so josiah he played a arachnite spider-man scientist theme he had, he had all mr black oz ones. on the yeah, team mr. too oz represent he had molecule man uh, with time gem mr oz having the sinestro ring is also a ton of fun so i super enjoyed that he was like playing this team and also again a listener of the show a super fun guy to like play against and everything so represent and then oh actually before we get into the second team uh the theme uh the on saturday his girlfriend played in he also played in but she was running like a herald theme and yeah. she had atrocitus so like, yeah she had saint atrocitus, walker, saint walker chip. she had green lantern chip yeah hal jordan and i was like i love this team like anyone that's like playing with lanterns is instantly like yeah. this is so cool You're so in. <laughs> so shout so shout out emma for playing lanterns because i love playing heralds they're literally some of my favorites you know you need a little guy gardener on that team but i get it atrocitus he's cool too if you want him making your uh your red stuff you totally can but you could use him and guy gardener just saying just throwing it out there um so yeah a lot of respect on emma for playing heralds but she also made top four in the theme event on sunday she was running cosmic she had dark side emperor gladiator power gem still rocking your boy saint walker and then high evo with some pumpkin bombs so a really cool team making top four again and just really cool that they're like a hero clicks couple and anyone i've ever dated has never i can never no. convince them to play hero clicks no so like, if you big I mean, respect to josiah big dating respect. anyone around hero clicks is like i'll show you my collection eventually if, yeah it'll take a few months this, I'd it'll be, take a little while with our current setup though i'll be honest it'd be it'd be really tough to hide I mean, that's yeah, like you walk into our front bro. door, guys. You're We're instantly greeted by here now. <laughs> two of the dopest shelves in the universe. Yeah, yeah I mean, like I it mean, would work. It would... <laughs> I'm not. I'm not debating that. I, yeah. I'm just saying it'd be tough to hide. Yeah, you know? would, oh, for sure. And the reason you, you know, you kind of hide them initially is you don't want to make them like jealous, right? Exactly. Oh yeah, I mean, that's the big. She's thing. like, I really can't believe you own all the zombie chases. That's like so cool. Oh, you have all the A6. How did you chases? get all of the A6 chases? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my God! Is that an OG Galactus? Yeah. Yeah. Casual. It's like, it's Chrome like no Silver Surfer too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's pretty cool. One, you know, <clears throat> masterpiece. No, no, it's really nothing. It's like whatever, you know. I'm just like a collector, you know, baby girl. Honestly, I don't, I don't really like talking about it that much. <laughs> I, I don't do a podcast oh about gosh. it every week. <laughs> And then uh, we'll just go through the really quick, the last pulp tournament on day four. Uh, Scott Crampton took a break uh, after wrestling, and he went back, and he's like, well, I better go win a pulp tournament really quick. I will, <laughs> let's try to figure out what his All team All right, time for a game on says. Dial H. Read Scott Crampton's handwriting. <sighs> Ultron Lair, Morlock Tunnels, Hell's Pit. Ding, 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 three for three. Okay, three for three. Okay, cool. Standard object, blocking and dock, right? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, Dr. Moira McTaggart at 20 points. Karima at 75. Dr. Strange at 60. Misty Knight at 30. Wow, he doesn't even know what they cost. It's just, it's all this scribbling. It's Mr. Sinister at 45. Teen Lantern. <laughs> Teen Lantern, yeah, I think. Marvella at 15. And then Red, Red Raven. Ra Red Raven at 45, really? Main set? Red that Raven. can't be. Red Widow? Is that what he meant? Yeah. He had to. Because Red Raven is 75 yeah. only in Sideline Active. He means Red Widow. So he doesn't even know what he's talking about. So Scott didn't even yeah. get this game show right. Sentinel. How can we win if he can't? <laughs> and War Machine. Who has Stark Industries on this team? Um. Marvella doesn't. No. Maybe um, Karima definitely doesn't. Maybe Misty, Misty Knight? Misty Knight, yeah. Red Widow have it, maybe. I have no idea. I do like the uh, James Atwood. I think the build is this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, um, he deciphered it for us. Red Widow, Teen Lantern, Mr. Knight. Yeah, okay, we were right. We were. We got it. Yeah, we got it all. Cool. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's what Scott got. WizKids poked a little bit of fun at him. Pulp victory, check. Silly pose, check. Legible handwriting, eh, big red X. <laughs> uh, that was pretty fun, so... I love I love what WizKids did this whole weekend. They kept everybody in the know about who like won, who qualified. Yeah. In these really fun posts showing off the team sheets, but also like a little bit of flair going on here with these little graphics. So Ooh. I super enjoyed it. Yeah, I really enjoyed what WizKids was doing this weekend, highlighting the winners, highlighting the teams, getting good posts. And you can like, expect all of that and more at Worlds. That's right, baby. Which that's right. uh 
you know, I think that's pretty much everything Gen Con, guys. But, you know, obviously there was still Sunday. We came home. We had a little surprise. It's pretty cool. It is really cool. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll have a... Uh, some little personalization at Worlds, but we got to, to see it. We ordered this a few weeks ago, but we got a, a nice, cool, custom banner. That's right. And we're excited to show you guys that at Worlds. Our, our good friend Luke made that for us, and it looks incredible. It's huge. And yeah, just it looks, uh, it looks amazing. Another thing to keep us official. That's right. <laughs> so that is the Gen Con wrap up, guys. Like always, make sure if you're listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks, wherever you're listening to this podcast, leave us a review. We haven't gotten like an iTunes review in a really long time. So I honestly, I think the first person that uh, that sends in an iTunes review is going to get some free legacy cards and team up cards, actually. So oh. be the, try to be the first one to do it. And even if you already see that and speaking uh, somebody of free else stuff, did it. too. Oh, yeah, he's speaking free Make stuff. Make sure, guys, you only have a week to enter. I'm not sure when this will go out. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But, you know, who knows? It's It's been a long week. But we do have the giveaway for X of Swords. That is on the YouTube. That is easy to enter. All you have to do is be subscribed to Dial H. Comment below what you're looking forward to more, Notorious or Wheels, and what figure are you looking forward to the most or, you know, expecting. Whatever works. Just let us know what you're hyped about. And you could win 16 boosters of Exoswords, a bunch of slop, a bunch of bagged prizes from that same event. So don't miss out on that. Go to our YouTube, check it out. And thank you, WizKids, again so much for hooking us up with all that. Fans for the fans. uh, Yeah, letting us have the opportunity opportunity to give out some more product to the fans is super awesome and shows how much they care about the community so it's really really huge guys make sure like ian said check out the youtube like comment subscribe and all the videos check us out make sure you stay up to date with everything follow us on x i guess now if yeah. you want to <laughs> stay tuned with us there on red old x. twitter yeah old red x uh, follow us on Facebook. Give us a like and a follow over there to see us post things like when videos go up, when uh, when whatever team builds go up, nationals. We're posting the top 16s and everything at nationals. So if you want to follow us there, make sure to follow us there. But guys, like always, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy Hero Clicks straight from the source, go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Doesn't work with Iconics or Play at Home kits. Guys, Gen Con was a ton of fun. Ian, yes. any, any last shout-out before we end the show? Oh, man. As someone who hasn't been to Gen Con... For like 10 years. The last time I was there, Ghost Rider and Heroes for Hire ATA was like what was being played. Batmite was the the big winnable. It was so cool to be back. It was absolutely packed. It was almost like overloading. Like walking around the exhibit hall, I was like, what do I even do? Yeah. Where do I even go? Oh, and then also, shout out the wonky dice that I bought that Brian Galley said (laughs) were legal. And guys, these are like, they just look really goofy. They're not straight edged at all. They're just, I don't know, they're misshapen. These are like, these are some Looney Tunes said, dice, bro. Brian said they are legal dice. He just doesn't want to take the time to explain that they're legal to people. So shout out to those dice as well. Can't wait to cause some issues with people with those. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all right, guys. And like always, happy trails. But most importantly, you are Kenoff. So if you're looking for emotional service, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan and humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people sure. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Think